This is the Lenovo ThinkPad T470 laptop, another line of T400 ThinkPad series released, I believe, around 2017 or 2016. I'm not certain. Uh, typically, when I see the T470 logo, I think 7th generation Intel uh, CPU, but in this case, this particular model has an Intel i5-6300U CPU, two cores, four threads at uh, 2.4 gigahertz and a max turbo frequency of 3.0 gigahertz. Um, but one nice feature that sets it apart from the T460 is that this has DDR4 memory, um, which is a nice performance boost. So. Um, on this model, we do not have a light-up keyboard. We do have the uh, typical little track point. And we also have a touchpad that I actually really like. Um, we not only have the three-button selection up here for the track point or just for casual use, but I really like the intuitiveness of this touchpad. Uh, feels nice, looks pretty good and it's very functional and a little bit larger than what I'm used to. Um, yeah, other than that, this particular model also has a 1366 by 768 HD display, 14 inches. Um, there's other more optimal solutions in the 1920 by 1080 range and full HD anti-glare. Uh, yeah, it would be nice to have that, but Unless one display is damaged, I do not plan on installing a 1920 by 1080 panel as they can get fairly expensive. Uh, there's a look at the top. Very characteristic of many ThinkPads. So let's take a look at the side input and output. Here on the left side of the laptop, we have input for the power adapter, which in this case is 65 watts. Uh, USB 3.1, I believe, and Thunderbolt 3 port, which is nice. There's a grill for the uh, fan exhaust and the smart card reader, if that is an option on your model. Here on the right side, we have microphone and he headphone input, another USB 3.1, HDMI port, an always on USB 3.0, RJ45 Ethernet port, and a 4-in-1 card reader for your SD cards. Also the Kensington lock support. And just in case you wanted to see the bottom of the laptop, there is the input for a docking bay. And right there is the 6-cell external battery. There's also a 3-cell internal battery, which is nice and provides much longer battery life and paired with the Intel uh, 6300U CPU, which is, does not have a huge power draw. Um, I think even reused and refurbished, you can get a lot of life out of this. Uh, well, you get a lot of battery life out of this laptop. Um, you'll notice there is a Windows logo here on a sticker, and that means that the Windows key is integrated onto the motherboard and you will not have to enter in a product key, generally speaking. Other than that, we have lots of ventilation for hardware cooling and passive cooling. And in another video, I showcase how to install uh, SSD and RAM and perform service, and I will link to that below or here in the video, and just showing how to remove this rear or bottom panel. So I have Windows 10 Pro 64-bit installed currently. Um, allegedly, this is a quote-unquote Windows 11 ready. However, you will find that you won't be able to upgrade internally. Uh, you will get the notification that hardware is not supported despite having the TPM requirements. Um, you can, however, install Windows 11 via USB and a little bit of smart resourcing with Rufus.iso. Uh, Feel free to leave me a comment if you want for more information or just search it up on a Google search. 
We have the Intel Dual Band Wireless AC8260 uh, wireless network card. And this also supports Bluetooth 4.1. So the 720p HD webcam is just like many others <clears throat> of this generation. Not bad, but not the greatest. So in summary, without demonstrating, um, this laptop is of course useful for running things like Microsoft Office, uh, Office 365, and various types of work, video editing, music editing, music software, DJing, music recording, whatever is within the capabilities of the hardware itself. Always just look at the system requirements and compare. The one thing I will do is demonstrate connecting to a second display via the HDMI panel or the HDMI input rather. And unfortunately, I don't have anything to demonstrate with the Thunderbolt port uh, as much as I would like to, just for fun. Uh, I'll test out a couple games and see what the integrated graphics are capable of. All right, I've got my gaming SSD hooked up to the T470. And I currently have Left 4 Dead 2 running. And I also have the HDMI connection to this uh, 1080p ASUS monitor that runs at 60 hertz. And despite this, um, I'm going to keep this running in 1366 by 768 resolution just because I feel like that's a little more appropriate for uh, the Intel HD 520 graphics. Um, playing at 1080 is definitely a possibility, but um, I'm kind of looking for better performance on the laptop itself. I'm just demonstrating that you can add a second display or a third display through the Thunderbolt on the other side if you desire. Okay, so here on the game intro, intro we're averaging 70, 60 frames per second. And let's see what happens with some gameplay. Okay, so just walking around, we're still hovering in the uh, 50s for frames per second. Uh, gameplay is nice and smooth, it's fluid, there's no choppiness. Um, so even though we're not peaking over 60 frames per second, uh, one bonus is that it's performing well. And I was most curious how the, uh, what the difference would be running uh, DDR4 memory instead of DDR3. Just for that little tiny bit of added boost. Um, yeah, so far so good. Because this is going to be just like the gaming tests I did on the Lenovo ThinkPad T460 with the same CPU but running uh, DDR3 memory instead of the faster DDR4 option. So just like in my video with the T460, I decided to fire up some Dead by Daylight just to see how it would run with the same integrated graphics Intel HD 520, but with, of course, the DDR4 memory. So right now I have the settings set to low and the resolution at 80%. So if you're okay playing windowed, I believe this would be a possibility. Right now on the menu, we're averaging around uh, 32, 35 frames per second. Um, let's see what it looks like when we're actually playing. I was just in a chase with the killer and I didn't actually have too much stuttering uh, going on. Um, unfortunately, the camera stopped recording during that period, so I didn't get the footage. But it was pretty dark and this is a bit of a dark level, so it's a little hard to see anyway. Um, but I am uh, satisfied with the results. This game is definitely playable on the system. Um, I just don't have headphones in, so it's really hard to hear. So the killer can sneak up on me really easily. All right, so I have Tomb Raider 2013 loaded up. Uh, I set the graphics settings to low and the resolution at 1366 by 768. And we're averaging around uh, between late 30s to mid 40s frames per second, uh, just standing here. Uh, so far, the experience is pretty smooth. 
and it actually is a little bit more fluid than on the T460 with the DDR3 RAM being, again, the difference. Um, yeah, this is actually really slick. The gameplay is pretty smooth. This game, of course, did come out before this laptop was even released, but uh, I guess it's just, uh, it can be very uh, graphically intense as well, though, is the thing, and I guess this is testament to the Peter franchise team being capable of really optimizing this game for a variety of different systems. Um, this game is totally safe to mark off as being totally playable, I think. Oh. So this sums up my review of the Lenovo ThinkPad T470 laptop uh, to the extent that I feel like covering, which is just gaming and some of the input output and some of the basic features of the laptop. Um, hopefully this gives you a good idea of what you can do with this device if you are currently looking at one in uh, around October 30th, 2022. This gives you a good idea of things you can accomplish or some of the possibilities that you can explore with this device. Um, you know, with more RAM, you could do different things. With the inclusion of uh, different solid state drives, you can have a dual drive setup. Uh, you can even install a NVMe SSD and the 2.5 inch SSD and hard drive bay um, with the proper adapter. Uh, so there's a lot of different little things you can do. Unfortunately, this does not have a quad core i7 upgrade option, so you can't purchase a motherboard to install with that. But uh, that aside, I, within the limitations, I think this is still a pretty good performance, especially for the price point you're probably going to find it at, which for me right now is around uh, $280 to $300 Canadian based on what's in installed. You might be able to find a better deal, uh, and if you did, let me know in the comments. And otherwise, if you're using one right now, if you're planning to, maybe just share your story and uh, we can talk about it in the comments and uh, give more information out to the masses. All right, thanks a lot for watching.